Good morning and welcome to This Week. The gloves come off as the House Speaker draws a line in the sand on the debt limit. I told the President, we're not doing those things that way anymore. Political politicians threatening to default. It's deeply irresponsible. And on the campaign trail with Bain Capital. We view Mitt Romney as a job destroyer. Obama's economy. A prairie fire of debt is sweeping across the nation. They don't get us. They don't get who we are. And Reverend Wright all in play. Obviously, that's something I repudiate. <laughs> Topics for our exclusive headliners. The two most powerful members of the House, Speaker John Boehner and Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi. Then, the Facebook IPO and the founder who renounced his citizenship. That and all the week's politics on our Powerhouse Roundtable. With George Will, Donna Brazil, Matthew Dowd, plus Laura Ingram of Fox News and Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom of Current TV. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos. It's your voice, your vote. Reporting from the museum in Washington, D.C., George Stephanopoulos. Hello again. President Obama and his fellow G8 leaders left Camp David last night for a NATO summit in Chicago after agreeing to do all they can to get our economies growing stronger with good jobs. But there was more evidence this week that we do not have any consensus on how to do that here in Washington where the parties are still far apart on how to handle the budget, jobs, and our national debt. Uh, thank you Speaker Boehner uh, laid down the gauntlet on Tuesday. Uh, let me just say it when the time comes, uh, I will again insist on my simple principle of custom reforms greater than the debt limit increase. And the president's team fired right back. The debt limit question has bubbled up. Uh, do you see... Can you a, believe it? Do you, can you believe it? <laughs> I can. I can. I don't you understand can't, it. I don't understand it. We'll dig into this debate and all the week's political news on our roundtable, but first, my exclusive interviews from the Capitol. I began by asking the Speaker to explain why he wants another showdown on the debt limit. George, the American people are still asking a question, where are the jobs? Uh, and dealing with our deficit and our debt uh, would help create more economic growth uh, in the United States, uh, and it would lift this cloud of uncertainty that's causing em employers to wonder what's next. So dealing with our debt and our deficit are critically important. But doesn't this, this uh, threat to hold the debt limit up, if you don't get the spending cuts, actually create more uncertainty over the next several months? No, George, the issue is the debt. You know, people aren't uh, clamoring to invest in Greece today. And if we don't begin to deal with our debt and our deficit in, a, in an honest and serious way, we're not going to have many options. Listen, uh, I'm not going to apologize for leading the real issue here is, will the president lead? Well, as you know, a lot of people say that uh, what makes us like Greece is putting the question of whether or not we're going to pay our bills, making that a political question. That's what The Economist said. No, oh, George, remember, again, this is about jobs. If we really are serious about getting the American people back to work, uh, removing the clouds of uncertainty are important. Uh, we, we look at the end of the year. We're looking at the largest tax increase in American history on January the 1st. Uh, we're looking at uh, big cuts to our Department of Defense. They're going to affect our ability uh, to keep Americans safe. And uh, we're looking at uh, an increase in the debt limit. Well, why do we want to wait and rush this through at the end of the year after the election? But you know this is not going to happen between now and the election. George, it's important that we actually do what the American people sent us here to do. Why do we always have to allow elections to get in the way of doing the right thing? You know, you, see, you talk about everything that's hitting at the end of the year. The National Journal, I'm sure you saw this, has written about it, said that that big uh, what, fiscal cliff, that's what Bernanke called it at the end of the year, is your last chance, Boehner's last chance. And I want to read you a little bit of the article and get you to respond, because it was, it was quite a, a piercing uh, article in places. Um, the writer John Farrell says, false starts and failures characterize John Boehner's nearly two-year record as speaker. As the leader of the House GOP, he has faced two crises of this scale and come up short on each occasion. No one has ever doubted his sincerity, his conviction, or his patriotism. What they look for is his leadership. You know, uh, George, uh, I've never uh, been shy about leading. Uh, but, you know, leaders need followers. Now, we've got 89 brand new members. Uh, we've got a pretty desperate caucus. Some say they're leading you. And, uh, and it, it's hard to keep uh, 218 frogs in a wheelbarrow long enough to get a bill passed. Quite an image. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if we weren't trying to do big things on behalf of our country, my job would be a lot easier. 
Uh, and the challenge uh, that I have is that we always have some members who want to do more. Well, I want to do more too. Uh, but Republicans are still a minority here in Washington. We got the Democrats control well, the Senate. You're Speaker of the House. I know. But we got Democrats who control the, the Senate. We got a Democrat in the White House. And, uh, and our members are pretty frustrated. Can you get more than half of your members to support a compromise with Democrats? That's what it's going to take. Oh, listen, we've worked with Democrats. Uh, you look through all these jobs bills in the Senate. 30 of them sitting over there, part of our plan for American job creators. All of them passed with bipartisan support. Not on these big budget bills. Though. So, uh, on the budget, we've done a budget. Where's the Senate? 1,120 days since they have passed a budget. Talk a little bit about the presidential campaign. The Democrats have come out all guns blazing this week on, on Mitt Romney's background at Bain Capital. Ads in your state, Ohio, the vice president went to your state and said that Mitt Romney's experience at Bain is one of costing workers jobs, costing them their pensions, and putting a burden on taxpayers, too. How do you respond to that in an effective way? Well, I think uh, Mitt Romney's got a very, has had a very successful career. And, uh, and I think his prescriptions for fixing our economy are a lot better than the president's. But the president's that the policies, Bain experience is going to bring him down? I don't believe so. The issue is going to be the economy. Uh, and I believe that Governor Romney's uh, proposals will strengthen our economy and get more Americans back to work. His proposals, but will his background at Bain end up being an anchor? Clearly the Democrats think they have some traction here. Uh, they may, but I don't believe so. We also saw this week that whole flame out uh, on this issue of whether or not uh, Reverend Wright should be used uh, in the campaign. What George, do you say to Republicans who think that's going to work? George, the issue is not Reverend Wright. The issue is the economy. Just before we walked in here, the De uh, Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, I saw an email. They're already using that proposal to raise money among Democrats, calling it race baiting at its worst. Well, listen, this kind of nonsense shouldn't happen. Uh, the the election is going to be about the economy and getting Americans back to work. And I think Governor Romney's prescriptions are much better. A couple of other things before I, I let you go. Facebook IPO is today, and uh, I know you don't pick stocks. But what I do want to ask you about is we saw a couple of senators, Senator Schumer and Senator Casey yesterday, uh, introduce legislation about one of the Facebook founders, Edward Severin, who's renounced his citizenship. They say, and they want to pass legislation that says anyone who renounces their citizenship should still pay all the taxes they owe, and if they don't, they can't come back here. Do you support that legislation? Well, there's already a law in the books, George, but this is outrageous. This is absolutely outrageous. What's outrageous? That, some, that somebody uh, would re renounce their citizenship to avoid paying taxes. Again, it's already against the law. So you don't think you need this new legislation? No, I'm not sure it's necessary, but... Uh, we would you support it if it is? Uh, if it's necessary, I surely would support it. How about uh, on the issue of J.P. Morgan? We saw that their losses continue to climb on this trade that many believe, and I know it's still a murky question, but many believe it would run afoul of the Dodd-Frank law. And, it's some, and they believe that this is a sign, though, that even tougher regulation may be needed. Are you still confident that repealing Dodd-Frank is the right thing to do in the face of stories like this? Uh, George, uh, there's no law against stupidity, no law against stupid trades. And as long as depositors' money wasn't at risk, and as long as there's no risk of a taxpayer bailout, uh, they should be held accountable by the market and their shareholders. And they are. Uh, I don't believe there's anything in Dodd-Frank uh, that would have prevented this activity uh, at J.P. Morgan. And you're still for repeal? There are big problems with this law, and it needs, it needs some big changes. You said uh, a couple weeks ago and got a lot of attention that there was a, perhaps a one in three chance that Republicans lose control of the House. I know that means there's a two-thirds chance that they hold it, uh, in your view. But, but what do you think could happen between now and November that would well, cause Republicans to lose the House? Well, George, I feel pretty good about where we are today. But, you know, my job as the, as the leader is to make sure that if everything falls apart, that we still have the tools that we need to hold on to our majority in the House. Uh, we've got uh, 89 freshman members uh, running for re-election in most cases. Uh, they've got a lot of tough elections out there. But again, if the election were held today, I, we I, see, I feel good about it. We see incumbents but, but, falling all over. What do you say about the prospect? And, and some people say this is quite possible that President Obama loses because of this wave and House Republicans get swept out as well. Well, uh, I don't believe that's going to happen. As a matter of fact, uh, I think most of our members are doing very well. But again, you never know what's going to happen over the next six months.
My job is to make sure our team is prepared. And you're confident that if Republicans hold the House, you'll come back as Speaker? I am. Mr. Speaker, thanks very much. Nice to see you.